Hello, today we're going to take a look at Keynote on the iPad and then compare it with Keynote on the MacBook Air. Other videos will look at how to do things. This one's an overview for comparative purposes. So here we are looking at the iPad Air and we'll go ahead and select the folder here. And then within this, we're going to click Keynote. When we select Keynote, a screen pops up. There's nothing to see here other than on the top, there is a plus sign, and then there are four little boxes, the top center. I'm going to press that plus sign. Here we go. And we get to choose a theme, start an outline, or cancel. Let's go ahead and choose a theme. Here we go. And this is the full selection of themes that are available. We can scroll down and look at them and you'll notice some of them like minimal here on the right says see all because there's more to choose from. Bold, portfolio, etc. For today we're going to go ahead and pick a basic presentation, the one on the top left. There we are, it's loaded. One thing that immediately changes is the uh, menu bar on the top. We see that there is the first one here, which is the menu bar there, which gives you a slide view, a light table, an outline, etc. Let's leave it where it is. And then we can look at the presentation and look at the presentation options. When we click that, if I did that right, like that, we have a presentation set up. So let's go to that. And down at the bottom, we see the themes here. And just below that, we see the slide size. And we can select the 4 by 3, the 16 by 9, the 3 by 4, square, and then the custom size. Let's leave it at 16.9. And let's stay with the theme that we had. So let's get out of this, down. And we're back at the presentation slide. Let's go ahead and add some slides. The plus on the bottom left gives us some options to add slides. We've got a presentation title, so let's go ahead and choose a slide title. We'll choose the one with the picture in it. There we go. Let's add another page, and this will be just a content page. Here we go. And finally, we'll add a page with images only, so we can see what we can do with images. There we go. So here we have four slides for our presentation. If we were to hit that play button, the little triangle up at the top, it plays the presentation. Play. Here we are, the first slide, which has nothing in it right now. The second slide. Third slide has nothing. And the fourth slide is a picture. And there we are, and we're out of it. The next tab over allows us to go ahead and add a table. There are a number of tables that you can add. Let's move over one more, and we can see a number of graph reporting formats available, 2D, 3D, and there are even interactive options. Moving over to basic shapes, we can see that we have a number of shapes to choose from, beginning with basic, then there's ge geometric shapes, objects, animals, nature, food, symbols, education, and so on. Next, we have the opportunity to bring our own photo or video in or use our camera to capture data onto our slide. And then if we go ahead and click the uh, share button, that's the box with the arrow pointing up, a screen pops up that allows you to share your presentation. What's worthy of note here is there is the copy and then there is the export and send and save to files. So you can go ahead and click the export and send, and you'll see we've got PDF, PowerPoint, and movies. What we can do is we can create a presentation with timing, etc., then export that into one of these formats so it plays uh, as the viewer uses it. Let's get out of that. And then we have a format button that allows us to format the slide, the background, the title, etc. And we've got the three dots, one of the key things here is the animate option, and that's a separate component. And then finally, on the extreme right, are settings. 
Let's go ahead and edit these slides. So let's select the presentation slide and call this my demo slide. Like that. We're going to change that name to the type I'm going to use my pen. Okay. Take that slide. Delete, delete. Let's see if we're deleting the right thing. Okay, there we are. And we're going to type in now a slide deck. And we're going to call that Healthy Foods. The next one over, we don't need a subtitle, so we'll go ahead and scoot over there and tap that and select the red delete. And that's gone. We'll take that and delete that too. It's gone. The second slide provides us the title, so we tap that. And we're going to go ahead and edit that. And we're going to type in veg, nuts, and proteins. And then let's scroll down to the subtitle and say on the subtitle, we're going to type in research shows that dot 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 we'll just continue with that and that's that page on this page we're going to add some bullets just so we can see what's happening the first bullet's going to be leafy greens and then we're going to add nuts in moderation olive oil and that should do it for what we're trying to show here and let's go to the last slide on the last slide we've got these three photos here we can click on that plus sign that allows us to go out and choose a photo or a video or take a photo and insert that photo instead of what's here. Let's leave these as they are. Now with that done, let's go back to the play button and hit the play button and see how it looks. This is how our presentation will look. And those are the basics of the iPad version of Keynote. One of the things that we did not cover was being able to add audio and record the presentation. In other words, if we could set this up so we could walk through the slides and talk through the slides and record all of that, capture it in a movie format and export it, that would be a nice feature to have. That feature is available in the MacBook Air version, but I could not find it in the iPad version. And now let's move forward to the MacBook Air version of Keynote next. Here we're looking at the MacBook Air. We're going to press Command Space Bar to get Spotlight up and then type in Keynote to find Keynote. And here we are at Keynote. It's got the theme selection and there you can select the screen size wide and standard. And the standard presentation is the one we used in the iPad model. So let's look at some of the menu items. We've got a menu item there with file, some edit functionality, insert, slide, and interestingly, and play. We've got a play button here on the top menu bar. Let's keep that in mind as we keep going. Let's now select the basic presentation and look at the menu bars again. The top menu bar still has a play and there's another play. This tag here allows you to view just the slide or the navigation bar. That play button plays your videos or plays the presentation in a standard format. In contrast, the other play button, when you select that, has a record slideshow option where you could narrate and go through the slides at your, comf at your own pace and then export that as a movie. So let's look at some of these uh, tabs here. There's an animate, I think that says here. Yep, it allows you to animate and create effects. Um, then there's document settings and audio settings and a format option. 
The file tab gives you a full selection of standard file, access, new, open, save, etc. And even export to PDF, PowerPoint, movie, or an animated GIF. This is a powerful feature. And we'll, in another video, we'll go through how to make a video, a YouTube video out of this. Edit gives you a standard selection of cut, copy, paste, uh, grammar, etc. And insert a table, as we saw on the iPad version, charts, text boxes, shapes, lines, and even images. So you can go ahead and insert all these things just like you could do on the iPad. And then we can insert a new slide or skip a slide, some font and text and other formatting functionality. And adjust your view and then back to the play. We can view this play in full screen or in a window, or we could record. And then there's some window options that you can set right there. So keep an eye on those two play buttons. They are different, and this is different from the iPad. And this is what allows us to do that recording we spoke about earlier, which we'll cover in full in a separate video. Otherwise, it's similar to the iPad version in functionality. I hope this helps, and uh, there'll be more videos on specific functionality within both platforms. Thanks for watching.